Hello everyone and welcome to this next instalment in the series on Komodo Dragon's openings. We're now looking at King's Indian type thingies and all sorts of things where you fianchetto your king's bishop. So let's have a look at knight f6. Um, and then why well, it's got a couple of possibilities, c4 or knight f3. Let's have a look at knight f3 first. So g6, c4, bishop g7 and as we saw in the overview um, Komodo Dragon would play e3 in this position. Um, but if you played knight c3, what is Komodo Dragon afraid of? Well, d5, the um, the Grunfeld. And uh, what line does Komodo Dragon want against the Grunfeld? Well, it wants the good old rook b1 uh, variation against the Grunfeld. When I was professional, this was all the rage and they were analyzing and analyzing. Without computers, can you imagine? But um, now with the computer analysis, it's pretty clear that uh, although this is very dangerous, um, it's uh, actually pretty much all right for black, really. So bishop e3, this is all uh, big theory, takes takes, knight e5, rook b7, a5. To be honest, I've yeah, I played the rook b1 variation a few times. I was never really very happy with that uh, a pawn that could march down the board. In fact, against uh, Bogdan Lalic, um, I had a game where uh, that pawn actually queened, which uh, sort of left me scarred and uh, emotionally bruised for the rest of my life. So um, uh, here, bishop c5, a4. Well, you'll see the uh, uh, the variations really. Rook e8, d6, queen e6. And now this move d7 and d takes e8. So, you know, white, um, white's exchange up for uh, for no pawn. I mean, uh, but that a pawn is, uh, is huge simply and it's uh, marching down. And uh, Komodo has to find this move, bishop a6, in order to stop her a1 queen coming in. So rook takes a6, there's rook b8. Um, and we're looking at h5, rook a1, rook takes a6, rook b8, takes takes, king h7, queen b7, rook a3. And you can guess what's happening next. King f1, knight d7, takes takes, and rook a1 check, rook a2 check. We're going to keep on checking, so we managed to get the f pawn. And this is just a fortress, basically. This is just a... Uh, uh, this is just a draw. So this is the, you know, the big uh, Komodo dragon analysis. And this is the reason why it doesn't want to play four knight c3. It uh, would rather play e3, avoiding these sort of uh, lines and, um, uh, and keeping the tension. Um, another interesting thing after knight c3, if black decided to play the, uh, the king's Indian, what would we uh, get? Well, um, the uh, the engine just likes uh, bishop e2, e5 and castles. And uh, well, when you let it analyze for a long time, it's not looking at the Mar del Plata with knight c6. It's looking either at e takes d4. Engines seem to be quite keen on this, although, yeah, I don't know, it looks a bit, uh, can never really believe that this should be, uh, you know, decent for black really. Or knight a6, which was a, a favorite move of mine when I was uh, professional. Played the King's Indian intermittently, most often in uh, in uh, weekend tournaments, uh, you know, not uh, rated tournaments. And uh, this was my favorite line. And uh, well, uh, Komodo Dragon thinks that this is, uh, uh, well, a very interesting uh, idea. Actually, to be honest, this looks pretty much like a Marvel Plata uh, in some ways, just with the knight on a6 rather than being over on e7. And uh, Lord knows who that helps. Yeah. Maybe a bit of uh, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh away, I think, in uh, in that one. But very interesting positions. Komodo thinks that white's slightly better, as engines always do in these uh, King's Indian positions. But uh, yeah, very unclear position. So that's um, uh, those lines. Now, what white can also do, of course, white could also just play c4 on move two. And um, uh, well, this gives a, a few extra possibilities to black and a few extra possibilities for white. So let's have a look. G6, um, F3 is one possibility for uh, for white. Um, this is uh, something that I was very keen on. It uh, I love playing the same system against the King's Indian, so I'm not at all worried if uh, if Black goes Bishop G7. And uh, yeah, there are a lot of uh, unusual lines against the Grunfeld if Black you know persists in playing that. Uh, my engine was actually looking at uh, um, at uh, yeah one of these. Uh, uh, Grunfeld lines with d5, uh, very big theoretical, but in the end went for probably the best move, which is a transposition back to uh, a modern Benoni. And uh, bishop e3, castles there, takes takes. I've played these lines a lot with white, normally with a bishop on g5, but the, you know, the structure's the same. 
Um, the big problem really for uh, for uh, for white is uh, how to develop this knight on g1. Ideally, it would come h3 to f2, but well, there's a bishop on c8 preventing that. I mean, Lila did want to play knight h3, allowing the doubling of pawns, but that's just a little bit, uh, maybe a little bit too sexy for normal use. Uh, what uh, Komodo Dragon comes up with is uh, quite amazing. Plays bishop e2, b6 from black, slightly unusual move, but uh, yeah, I mean, this rook could come over like this. And then just plays king f1. It's just going to castle artificially. So uh, play g3, king g2, <clears throat> and then try and play knight h3 to f2. Never seen that before, but uh, why not? Quite interesting in actual fact. Um, and Komodo gives itself a 0.37 advantage in this. Definitely going to have a look at this one because uh, it's extremely interesting, I think. Um, so, but if you don't play uh, f3, you might play knight c3. Now, of course, Komodo would accept the, would ex would expect the uh, the uh, the Grunfeld. But um, if uh, white if black plays the uh, the king's Indian here, just interesting to see does uh, does Komodo dragon want the uh, the classical still knight f3 bishop e2, or does it have uh, some other ideas? Funnily enough, it likes the Makoganov with uh, h3, and uh, um, it actually thinks that uh, knight c6 is the very best move here. But let's just go uh, to the line where I've got the most variations. This was uh, castles, bishop e3, knight c6. It might just well transpose. And then uh, d5, knight e5, f4, knight e d7, g4. Now, I mean, um, uh, if you're a, a fan of uh, human chess, you might just recognize this because uh, this is a game of uh, Fabiano Caruana's against Ferrugia, uh, by can say 2020. And uh, it carried on like this, b6, knight d4, knight c5. And uh, Caruana played queen f3 here. Um, Komodo, dragon wants knight c6, bishop g2, bishop a6, takes, takes, queen d2, knight d7, e5. And after knight b6, castles queenside, which is quite uh, quite something. Takes rook e1, bishop b7, knight a5, rook b8, fe. And uh, well, you can tell that white's got a, a pretty big initiative, although black's got some uh, pressure on the queen side. Komodo Dragon gives it a, a 0 0.69 evaluation, so pretty good for white there. Um, so yeah, I mean, this system definitely worth uh, looking at. And uh, um, yeah, it's quite dangerous uh, for, for white, and uh, it's the one that Komodo Dragon likes the best. And there's one more line that we uh, have to look at, and that's the Benko. After c4, black could play c5, d5, and then b5. And what does Komodo Dragon want in the Benko? Well, this is a really weird thing because uh, actually Komodo Dragon doesn't want to play the Benko in any recognisable way, really. Um, in this position, Komodo Dragon wants to play e6. Um, and funnily enough, there was quite a, um, a high-level game played with, um, um, with this line. Um, and uh, um, what, White's, what Black's looking for is just to, uh, to take on d5, take with a knight on a6, bishop g5, bishop e7, takes takes knight f3 h6 bishop h4 rook b8 b3 g5 bishop g3 rook b6 does not look amazing to me but um uh, komodo dragon was uh, pretty satisfied with that uh, sort of giving something like a i don't know 0 0.50 advantage for uh, for white and uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, that's uh, um, really quite strange. You know, I mean, the normal way that you play the Benko here is to take with a bishop on a6 at some stage. If white goes e4, you take on f1, make the, the, the white king move, um, and then claim to have comp compensation on the a and b files. But this is just playing directly in the center here. So quite stunning. And funnily enough, after uh, if you play g6, um, then uh, Komodo looking for a7 in this position. Rook takes a7, knight c3, and then I'd expect bishop a6 here to meet e4 with bishop f1. But actually, Komodo doesn't even want to do this. It just wants to play bishop g7, e4 castles, um, a4, and then e6, just playing in the center like this. It's a very, very different way of playing the um, of playing the benko there. And, uh, well, this is the position that um, uh, Komodo dragon ends up with here. Bishop a6, then find some... Uh, some weird tactics here, attacking the bishop on f4, the rook on a1, takes and uh, yeah, manages to claim uh, some sort of slight advantage for white. Well, 0 0.75, which is fairly significant. I mean, I'm not you know very clear about all the lines or why black's doing this, but it's a completely different concept of the Benko than uh, than we're used to. Uh, so yeah, that was really uh, really interesting to uh, to see as well. 
Um, and yeah, you know, I mean, in terms of uh, King's Indian variations, it likes. There's the uh, the classical um, against that, and also the Makoganov. Now, just see, there's one more thing to uh, to show, and that's the Dutch. What does uh, uh, not knight f6, but f5? What does Komodo Dragon want to do against the Dutch? And uh, well, I'd really expected some line like uh, I don't know, knight c3 or bishop g5, but actually, Komodo Dragon just wants to play very, very classically. Um, just wants to play c4, e6, knight f3, knight f6, and then g3 here. Um, and the interesting thing, and uh, you'll see this with. Uh, many engines as soon as the Dutch is played with f5 and the engines want to play a stone wall and uh, for some it's really weird because uh, often the uh, evaluations are pretty bad for the stone wall but there's an awful lot of draws and uh, well this is uh, um, uh, what they want to do c6 knight e4 g5 played like a true Dutch player this one bishop e3 knight d7 knight e5 takes takes and now a5 and uh, Komodo Dragon gives um, uh, a 0 0.71 evaluation to uh, to uh, to white. But in general, in these sort of uh, solid stone walls where this bishop is really um, well restricted by uh, by this pawn on d5, then uh, yeah, then black's normally managing to uh, to draw these. And this uh, a5 is uh, well Komodo's improvement on uh, a game from 2022, Maximovic against Ivanasevich, Termikates 2022. Um, but pretty interesting, really, and you know, interesting to see that uh, Komodo just wants to play a G3 system against the um, uh, the Dutch, and also that it's expecting stone walls. Um, what it doesn't want is uh, the Leningrad. So uh, I gave it the Leningrad and asked Komodo Dragon, "What do you want to do?" And again, nothing fancy. No Knight H3 systems, no H4 or whatever. Just uh, playing very, very solidly here. Um, Knight C3 castles, and then this move, Queen B3. Knight a6, bishop f4. Slightly uh, unusual development there, but um, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, Komodo Dragon seems to think that it's um, um, a little bit better here, but uh, I mean, I think engines find these positions quite complicated. I'm not particularly impressed with the way that uh, Komodo's playing queen b3, bishop f4, bishop d2. Don't really understand it, to be honest. Uh, thinks it's slightly better, of course, but um, uh, not 100% sure about that. Not re doesn't really feel uh, really convincing to uh, to me. But um, uh, but anyway, the G3 system against the Dutch, that's the one that Komodo Dragon really likes. Okay, so that was uh, Fianchetto systems. There's just one more video to come, um, and that's random stuff. So let's get into it.